This podcast has language that some people may find offensive. You're listening to Opie and Anthony. Opie and Anthony. On the virus. Serious XM. This is Shock Chucks, the rise and fall of Opie and Anthony. I'm Matt Provenzano. But enough of this palaver. Let's get the show on the road. Episode 7. Keep your head on a swivel. The Opie and Jim show didn't pack the same punch that Opie and Anthony did, but they certainly tried. They still had great, funny guests on the show, and some of the broadcasts really were like nothing had ever changed. My personal favorite was the episode with Johnny Knoxville, Louis C.K., and Chris Hadfield. In one right. day, how, how often did you see the sun rise and 16, set? 16 times a day. You go around the world every 92 minutes or so, 90 minutes. So, so eight sunrises and eight sunsets. No, 16 of each. 16, 16 of each. Yeah, we're used to seeing the world uh, like a globe, you know, in the library that's sort of shiny and smooth. Mm-hmm. The world looks nothing like that. It is. It's like a blob, right? No, no, it's text. No, no, the camera's like no, I know what it's like. Job. Don't tell me what the world looks like. <laughs> <laughs> I know what it looks like. Absolutely. <laughs> the show was doing okay, but something was clearly off, and it all boiled down to one thing. Opie and Jim were never meant to be the two showrunners. They weren't the ones who had the chemistry. The trio had the chemistry. Opie, Jim, and Anthony. Out of anything to come out of Anthony's firing, this isn't the duo fans had expected. In fact, most people weren't happy that Jim didn't go with Anthony. <laughs> Gender queer is, I, I even asked my therapist, what is that? Because I've read that term before. And I, I'm you held up a mirror. <laughs> <laughs> when the two of them went on a roll, those were some of the greatest moments in the show's history. The many compilations on YouTube of Anthony making Jimmy laugh is a testament to that. How long before this uh, catastrophic event? That's that's difficult to say. That's kind of between her and her creator at this point. But, but educate, I would say, oh, educate, educate, educate. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Anthony. <laughs> Opie and Jimmy weren't Abbott and Costello. Imagine if the Beatles separated and a new band was formed with George and Ringo. Like, yeah, they're talented musicians, but that's not exactly the duo people wanted. That was how this felt. And they both knew it. Neither one of them were ever extremely happy with the position they were in, but it's a job. They showed up to work every day and put on a show. Sometimes you could sense the tension in the room. There were a lot of times where Jimmy would do one of his characters, and Dopey would either not respond or move on to something else. How come Sam has got a little bit of... Why has he got like a little bit of milk product spilled no. on the back of his Boy Scout yoni okay, form, Okay, now that's, that's going too far, I think. Yeah, I was I, I think that's way him. too far. I massaged them. It felt like a ticking time bomb. Were they ever going to address the uncomfortable elephant in the room? Yes. Yes, they were. December 1st, 2015. Opie and Jim had Esther Koo in studio. Religion has always been such a, like, oh, no. source of evil in my life. Oh, no. Here you know? we go again. <laughs> Are your parents religious? I love Esther's so family life. Everything appeared to be fine yeah, we were just until Esther right. mentioned Anthony. So why was religion evil in your house? Oh, by the way, I went to see your friend Anthony yesterday. That's all right. Oh, my God, that was so much fun. Okay. Can I say that? Of course. Okay, okay. I would hope you'd say that. Oh, okay, good. No, it helps because... He's a delightful man. (laughs) (laughs) Well, first of all, it's just later in the day. Even then, Opie seemed to push through it and try to make a joke out of it. Why wouldn't it be fine? Oh, I don't know. Sorry. Oh, Probably your reaction. Huh? You might have thought you reacted. How did I react? I didn't even react. No, you didn't react. You were... We talked about it yesterday. I said, you know, it was fine. We don't talk, but I don't... But, you know, I don't, I don't care if people do a show. Right. So... Anyway, the are you, religion. Are you guys going to talk at the benefit? No, not at all. He's done some really shitty things. No, now I'm pissed. No, it goes really deep. The stuff I've I've found out recently. No, I'm not talking to him, and I won't be in the same room as him. No. Do you know, do you know any of the stuff that he's done lately? Okay, fair enough. No, I'm not. The shit I found out recently. No, no, I'll never be in the same room as that fucking guy. <clears throat> you you don't have to be, you know. You, I don't know what you're choose. talking about. That's fine. Like I said, you're you know I, I I I'm not putting you in the middle of it. But if you don't know, you don't know. That's fine. 
How do you know they're true? I'm not saying they're not. I don't even know what you're talking about. I'm leaving you out of it. Simple as that. And I'll, and I'll never talk to you about it. You'll never tell me? No. No. I'm, no. You, you know. No. Why won't you tell me? I don't want to. Okay. I don't feel like we're that close in that way. No, I'm not telling you. Okay. <sighs> anyway. Hi, Esther. Hi. Sorry I brought that up. What, no, it's uh, not your fault that we're not that close. That's not your, that's not your <laughs> fault. Opie then tried to get back on track and interview Esther. What's going on? Um, nothing much. <clears throat> What's going on with you? I'm actually good in general. Uh, anyway, so what, re what religion were you growing up? But the damage was already done. Yeah, because they were super into it, you know? Right. So. Hmm. All right, this got weird. <sighs> well, it just got weird because I'm asking you something. You're like, we're not that close like that, which is fine. But well, you know, we're not. I mean, we do a good show together and stuff, but we're not that close. Uh, so now you're mad at me for something? I'm not, I'm not mad. Uh, I'm not mad. We're not close yet. What? This is a surprise to you? We're not close. We do a good show together. It's okay. Uh, Don't say ugh. I'm gonna say ugh. Don't say uck. You know everything has been going on. You don't, you don't. No, but I don't know exactly what you're talking about. You're saying something that I don't know, and you're acting That's like fine. I do know. I believe you. I really do. But it, it does make me very upset. Okay? But I do believe you. I'm not saying, like, why don't you think we're close? I don't give a shit about that. But if I say to you, why, well, what, what's going on? I don't think it requires us to be in love with each other for you to say off the air, I, like, this I, is what's been happening. I don't think I, that's I've an issue of closeness. I, I've told you some of the stuff, and we've talked about some of the stuff, so... But I got, I got, you know, more info and stuff, and I'm just blown away by it, to be honest with you. So, blown away. You say odd shit to people, dude. You're a good guy. Whatever. But you say odd shit to people. Like what? Like that. Like what? Like that. Because we're not close, so why would I tell you? Because we're it's not close. But what, what, is, okay. what kind, who are you close with? Like, what constitutes close I to you? I don't need to tell you who I'm close with. I'm I, I, got my, I got my people that I'm close to. All right. All right. I'm sure you I, I've made a decision not to involve you in all this crap because you are in the middle. I don't You're feel absolutely in the middle. I don't feel in the middle. This went on for an hour and a half. But I'm sure you think that somehow I'm against you. I'm sure I, I'm positive. You, you know, I didn't say that. You don't have to. I didn't say that. I, I know. It's everybody else. I got it. The way Jimmy felt was finally public and the two hashed their dirty laundry live on air. Whatever, man. What? What do you mean, what? I mean, whatever. It's, it's always uncomfortable. It's always uncomfortable. Then, then you don't have to be here. Why well, are you here? If it's so uncomfortable, why are you here? Because I so like performing. Okay. And this is my job. Why would you walk into an uncomfortable situation every day if it's uncomfortable? Why don't you why? ask yourself that, too? I'm fine. I, you're I'm not happy. fine. I'm happy. I didn't say I wasn't happy, but you're not fine. I'm fine. Okay. You, you don't know the first thing about me. I'm fine. I know. I don't know you. I've been working with you 15 years. You're right. I don't know anything about you. You don't Come know. My, you don't know. You, you you're know. right. No, no. I know nothing about you. You're right. You're, you, you I stand and in front of Esther. You, know, you, know. you guys, is this a real fight? Huh? It's a big bickering. Do you, do you fake it for the radio? No. Oh, God. No. no. I'm comfortable here. You're not always comfortable. I'm comfortable you here. You can't even look at me half the time. I'm, talk I'm doing Uncle Paul. You're literally looking into the monitor like, I wish this guy would just go away. Uh, I'm not a fan of Uncle Paul, you know that. We've talked about it, whatever. The fight ranged from Opie's closeness with his peers. But you come back with, no, this other stuff happened, like, which I don't know about. Which I was uh, keeping between, uh, you know, me and a few a few people I trust. And, and right, they, so you, and, think and I'm, you actually out. think I'm going to go in and say it on the air or go back and tell somebody? I didn't, I didn't say that. You said me and a few people I trust. Yeah, I got people I trust in my life, yes. And I, talk, and I talk to a lot. His personal problems. You have literally no idea how your moods affect other people. I'm not, I'm not saying you be, gotta go. I will in October. I'm fine here. I know you're fine. I'm here. fine here, and I and, and I in enjoy October, what I'm doing. doing. We don't need to reiterate it. In October, I'm done. I don't want to wait till October. Then that's ridiculous. Jim's relationship with Anthony. When Ann takes all the shots at me, you just make believe he's not doing that, or what shots? Well, a lot of people feel like, uh, you know, the obvious show is you and Anthony, so why aren't you doing that? 
I mean, well, first of all, he because didn't... you guys absolutely still had the chemistry. When me and Anthony were extremely popular, it was because we had amazing fucking chemistry. And then when you came in, we all had amazing chemistry. By the end of the Opie and Anthony show, me and Anthony's chemistry was shit. And but you guys still had really good chemistry, and that and that is out there. A lot of people wonder why you, you and him aren't doing a show together. The day Opie cried on air. The day I spilled my guts about the shit Ant did and poured my soul out and actually cried, which was beyond embarrassing, you could, you could barely muster up any support for me that day or stick up for me. Because go, I was, go listen to the tape. Because you're, you're barely I'll in it. I'll tell you why. You're barely in it. Because that was because you want to stay out of the you and him. And that that well, was I'll fair tell you, enough. Fair enough. I can only give you my opinion because I was sitting here. Yes, I was purposefully quiet, 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 extremely quiet, listening to you and he air your differences. You know why? Because I wasn't, I wasn't asking for a motherfucking. But I was like, wow, could he say something here? He knows a lot of the shit that went on. Maybe he could back up some of this. I stuff. do not. Yes, being the guy who got fired. I'm not. But I wasn't asking for a motherfucking. I know anything, that. Anything. Thing. You didn't need Anything. me to. Like I said, yeah, I kind of needed you. No, you day. didn't, dude. I you didn't. did fine. No, you were I open you. and honest, and you didn't need me to. Jimmy, if you need to know, because we've been friends for a long time, I kind of needed you that day. And I was bummed that you weren't there for me. Oh my and, god! And I did get, I did get over it. But I, why wouldn't we're you? We're talking honestly. No, no, I know that, but I'm shocked that you feel that way. Like, why wouldn't you? Have Absolutely, I needed you that day. Period. I was here, even to Opie not saying hello in the morning. Do Isn't that strange? Half the times I come in the morning, I'll say, hey, hey, everybody. And you either don't say anything, and maybe it's your hearing, but literally you don't say anything. But I don't do that to everybody else. For some reason, that's where we're, me because and you, you are at. Because you guys have so okay, much time what to is say it from hello your on end? the air. I don't See, you, feel comfortable around you. I don't feel like, but why? like you give a fuck about me. I feel like I say hi to you almost every morning. I really do. I, I know you I do. I really do. But I'm do. telling you as the person who experiences the lack of hello from you. That you don't. Like, what are you talking about? Maybe just, your hello's like at a two. We need to raise it to like an eight. But I, or, or, Ooh, or, or make it a two. Nice. You know I don't, I don't I mean? It's a zero. In the end, the fight slowly came to a resolution on air. And it didn't feel like the two hosts were mad at each other by the time the broadcast had concluded. <laughs> I feel like we got a lot accomplished today. No one, I, I like doing this version of the show. I really do. You know, I, I mean, just... I want to let you know that, I, and, and I like. I'm I'm really actually very surprised by our success. I've had to shit for forty minutes. I'm not saying we should take a break. I'm just telling you, I've, I've literally had to take a shit for forty minutes. But the growing separation between Opie and Jim that the listeners had suspected was now confirmed. It was just a matter of time. When would Jim leave? Meanwhile, things weren't looking so great for Anthony either. At the time, Anthony was dating a young woman who went by Danny Galaiti. She was 26 at the time. Anthony was 54. They had been going out for over a year, and Danny was now living in Anthony's Long Island mansion. She knew he dated other girls, but she didn't care, because she got everything for free. She once wrote on Reddit, quote, I talk like a baby, I get money. I make stupid jokes that aren't funny, I get money. I wake up in a huge, gorgeous house, lay by the pool all day, don't have to work, don't have to pay for anything, go to Hawaii for free, I get money. Life is hard. I can deal with my boyfriend going on dates with other girls because in the end, I'm begged back, and I get money. Unquote. On December 19th, 2015, the two had apparently gotten into a fight. This was not uncommon, but this particular fight turned violent. Danny posted this 1 minute and 47 second video on her Periscope account. I'm in Long Island. I got my hand broken. I'm waiting for the police to come, but you shouldn't have lied then. You shouldn't have lied, and you shouldn't have hit me, and you shouldn't have treated me like shit, and then I wouldn't be Periscoping this right now. Leave my house. I'm asking. I'll pay to have you go back to the... I don't need you to pay for a car. I need you to pay for my fucking broken hand, you dumb piece of shit. Moving it, but you're moving your hands. She showed her bruises to the camera. This is beautiful. So glad that you guys saw this. But uh, just so you can see some other shit. Uh, right there. And then uh, right there. She turns the camera to Anthony, who is ecstatic. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's the Anthony and Danny show. Oh, never put my <laughs> name with yours, you racist <laughs> bigot. Stay away from me, you <laughs> fucking psycho! <laughs> Come on, baby! Oh my God, isn't this great? You find me all the time. I've already, up I've already uploaded Sweetie. all your. 
The morning after the video was posted, Anthony was arrested and charged with strangulation in the second degree, unlawful imprisonment in the second degree, assault in the third degree, and criminal mischief in the third and fourth degree. Anthony pleaded not guilty and was released without bail the following day. Six months later, he did plead guilty and agreed to six months of alcohol rehab and a program designed for batterers. The video that was released by Danny made headlines. Shock jock Anthony Cumia, no stranger to controversy over the course of his career over these past few decades, was arrested this weekend after allegedly assaulting a woman at his home in Long Former Island. Former Opie and Anthony shock jock Anthony Cumia was arrested after allegedly getting into a fight with a woman at his home in New York. But that wasn't the end of it. In April, a YouTube channel posted the entirety of the video, which now stretched to 11 minutes. Okay, but where's the last time you remember? Did you have it upstairs when you unplugged the phones? When what? When you were like upstairs with the phones or in the, in the office with the phones? After the argument, Anthony is seen and heard looking for his gun. Where the fuck is my gun? <laughs> fuck! Later, Danny is heard speaking to the police. Sorry to make you come out here. <laughs> yeah, we were uh, kind of screwing around having some fun. Yeah. It's That's... getting a little loud and then... So, you know, they're professionals. They don't want to hear that you accidentally called 911 because you thought it was funny. We're so sorry to have bothered you. They continue arguing and looking for the gun. Oh, we'll ask the cops! Wait, 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 don't go! What are you doing? Wait, wait, wait! Do They'll help us find it! No. Do you need help finding your gun? Do you need help finding it? They'll help! Um, You've literally um... lost a <laughs> firearm! <laughs> You stop this right the fuck now. Anthony was ordered to stay away from Danny. He obliged. In September of 2016, Opie and Jim were nearing the end of their contract. If you remember from the fight earlier, Jim said, In October, I'm done. Well, October was coming. Opie and Jim had actually managed to close out the year. They did have a few other little scuffles. It never got as bad as the Esther Koo fight, but that doesn't mean they didn't have more spats. There was one time where a guest had been invited onto the show that Jim had a problem with. When raising concerns with Opie, he suggested that Jim just leave the studio during the interview. Jimmy didn't take that well, and you can hear it during the interview. All right. What's wrong with Jim? Are you, are you, are you all right? You... We had issues before. It's really? Big deal, right? <laughs> <laughs> we had... Well, the issue was DL, if you want to get into it. Really? Yeah. Yeah, because I am I like you very much. Um, I knew he'd say that, so uh -huh. I'm kind of glad I did that. We had to do radio. I had to go right do my radio show. I don't work for, for a great boss like you. I have a dick for a boss. So it was it was a whole thing. <laughs> I know the feeling. They got. <laughs> they got. And so... Listen closely to the bickering between Opie and Jim here. Well, I also asked, I uh, told wow. Jimmy, if you guys are, you know, have a relationship, he should have uh, I had reached no out idea. to see this what... Is that, that's that true, all, but yeah. this, that you don't actually do that with people. You know, it's like we all I, have our I, way I, of handling I this. Have. No, I had okay, no, I no idea. Right. And I, you know what, when something... If you didn't catch that, that's Jim saying, oh yeah, good for you. I have our way of handling this. I had no idea. And I, you know what... So the question remained, what would happen to the show? Well, one of the theories that held water was that Jim would do a new show with Sam Roberts. Sam started as an intern for the Opie and Anthony show in 2005. He became a regular on the show, he worked his way up from intern to executive producer, and now was potentially about to co-host his own radio show. Him and Jimmy had chemistry, and they could capitalize on that. It's just that we do the show in the morning, and then we just spend our lives together. Yeah, we got a, we got a malted with two straws. It was really gay. <laughs> but yeah, we, uh, I, I wonder that too. What they say? They say semi bran muffins, or they said some. Yeah, they go. One guy Opie and Jim had Judy Gold and Sherrod Small on the show on September twenty second, two thousand sixteen. Should be educated, and uh, you can't keep saying. He's you know, educated. He went to school. I know he went to school. He but Jim whipped out Uncle Paul. Oh, yeah, cleaning I do. Vagina? Sure, what you gotta I be careful. Boys. What about the shit gets you gotta caught be in the careful. Balls? Your nose well, don't get stuck. Yes. Yeah. Interrupted <laughs> Opie a few times. He got mad. Was it weird cleaning up penis there, Judy? No, well, well, I, you know, I just like the kids. I didn't even think about it. <laughs> Maybe it's better. And the show came and went. <laughs> this would become the final broadcast of Opie and Jim. This is where the controversy and conspiracies came in. Opie claims he was forced out of the morning slot by Jim in an attempt to kick him out and start his own show with Sam Roberts. Jim and Sam vehemently deny that, claiming that Opie left on his own terms. Hey pal, I said put me on another station. 
I didn't expect them to squeeze Opie out for me. Stop getting your fucking news from Twitter. Nobody took Opie's show away from him. He, no, and it, it was never thought to me that they were going to push Opie out for me. That's not what the thought was. The thought was, we don't want to work together anymore. It was a mutual thing. And I never once said I was a victim. We didn't want to work together. We weren't enjoying each other. Opie started to upload strange and cryptic videos to his YouTube channel, Opie Radio. The message he was trying to convey was somewhat clear, but the method he chose to do it was different, to say the least. It started on September 27, 2016, when he uploaded a video titled Sharks at the Aquarium. Good morning, Lamb Chops. This is Opie, and I want to thank everyone that reached out to me trying to figure out what to do. It's a minute and 15 seconds. It consists of a looped video of a shark swimming in the aquarium, with background audio of a child and his mother examining the shark, and the score from Jaws getting louder and louder. Under all of this, Opie is giving a vague update on his career, but the background noise makes it really hard to hear him. What we can hear him say is this. I do not do morning radio anymore. I do not do radio with Jim Norton. I found out through my agent that Jim Norton will continue with Sirius. It looks like he'll be doing a show with Sam Roberts. I think that's pretty obvious to everybody. I have not been fired. Sirius has been very good to me over the years. Let me leave you with a little lesson. Keep your head on a swivel, because you never know. That's how the video ends. Comments have been disabled, and the video has 180 likes and 1.7 thousand dislikes. So yeah, you want to uh, sure bring up this YouTube video we got mentioned in? Yeah, our fins hurt. <laughs> <laughs> but literally, they have not promised us anything because everything is up in the air because he's not signed, so they don't know what he's doing. Right. The day after, Jim and Sam announced publicly that Opie has left the morning time slot. On October 3rd, 2016, Opie uploads a video titled, Beach Riding is Fun. It's 53 seconds long, has no dialogue or anything other than natural beach sounds, and consists mainly of writings done by Opie in the sand. It reads, quote, Did not want to leave mornings. They wanted longer. I said no fucking way. We'll do a great show. Gotta go get worms. Unquote. The video ends with a shot of a fishing rod. The mention of worms at the end was a clear dig at Jim. Jim, probably getting fed up with Opie's strange videos, posted a video of his own on his Twitter account. It's a single shot of a note that reads, Thanks for the mammaries. The shot tilts down to a flushing toilet, while a hand comes into frame and waves goodbye at the toilet water. Mammaries is most likely a reference to the fact that most of Opie's haters have christened him with a nickname, Tits. The day after that, two new shows officially debuted, Jim Norton and Sam Roberts, and the Opie Radio Show. I feel like a free man, finally. Nothing against Jimmy, but now I feel like, okay, the ONA thing is officially over. And in the future, if, uh, I don't know, other things happen, then it'll be a brand new, different thing. I feel that, like, in my bones that it's finally over. Then, on October 5th, 2016, on Opie's new solo radio show, something unexpected happened. Why don't we uh, move on? Take some calls. Take some calls. All right. We got uh, HG from Long Island. Hello. Hello. Who's Hello. this? Is is this the uh, Opie show? <laughs> <laughs> For the first time in how long? Two years, Two years. three months. It's Anthony Cumia. Greg go. Opie Hughes, ladies and gentlemen, Holy on shit. on my fucking show. Wow, this is crazy. Just as Opie said, for the first time in over two years, not only did Opie and Anthony speak to each other, they were live on the air. How bad did it get that you have Paul Mercurio? It's Monday! <laughs> oh, that kind of jab would carry a little more weight if you didn't have Rich Voss sitting next to you. <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to do, discuss that new show, The Sopranos? <laughs> <laughs> it was as if time had never passed. You're doing good, Anthony. I don't know, you, made a, you might have heard some legal wranglings that have been in the news. <laughs> if I have to go to, uh, like, alcohol meetings and... Uh, Do you wink, wink, miss the drinking? Uh, no, I, you know, I, I <laughs> went to rehab. Right. And, uh... How was that? You know, as they say, one day at a time. It was actually pretty fun. The second you called, you two started laughing together. 
And you know what it made me oh. feel? It made me. Oh, it made, oh, it shut made up. me feel shut like. Up. You know what? I'd be totally open to uh, getting together somewhere, hanging out, and uh, having a little chit chat. Nice oh. and light. Keep it light. You two should sit down and fuck. I said it earlier, and I've been oh, saying wow. it forever. So what a brilliant new thought we haven't read on Twitter. Oh, listen. <laughs> uh, yeah. They laughed. They shared old memories. They trashed Rich Voss. This is great. This Wait. is the best fucking radio do you, in do you, so uh, long. Well, it would be without you, Rich. <laughs> Listen, I, you don't want me to get started, you motherfucker. <laughs> well, we, we've been waiting for you to get started for 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> they trashed Paul Mercurio, who 15 years earlier was partially responsible for the Sex for Sam debacle and their subsequent firing. Who are you on with? Mercurio of all. Oh, <laughs> oh God. <laughs> I'm going to have him run to give uh, someone a blowjob in a synagogue. <laughs> You can't, you can't be that desperate that you would have Paul Mercurio on. <laughs> oh, no, it's here fucking. Here we go, Mr. Afternoon. Oh, oh my, my God. God. Can you believe how long Mercurio fucked our careers up? <laughs> Despite all of the drama in the last two years, they had a lighthearted conversation. After all the bullshit, the silent tension on and off air, the text messages, the differing opinions, the splitting lifestyles, the shots taken at each other, 20 years of a hostile partnership, here they were speaking again. Let me ask you one question. All right. Do really? you honestly think I didn't stick up for you? Uh, uh, yeah, I didn't think you went to bat as a guy that did radio with somebody for 20 years would have went to bat. I never heard one inkling that it happened. So, yeah, I just never thought you you gave it a, a good shot. I I I gave it a I gave it a, a fair shot. That's for sure. I got screamed at. That's just it. I, like a fair. Do you want to hear that? Well, the, well, the other thing is to be fair. I did, I mean, was I? Were we going to continue at that point? Did you honestly think we were? Yeah, I I honestly think we could have just continued doing uh, good shows. I, I, I really do. You didn't want to do afternoons ever? Like, even when uh, Sabian me fucking mental patient Sabian wanted us to do afternoons? Dude, I, I, I uh, ran into him a couple days ago, matter of fact. Hopefully hopefully <laughs> with your car. He's out, his, he's, out his, <laughs> he's out of his fucking mind. It's amazing. Everything was okay. That's right. my saying. I'm out of here. I, I got to actually go. All right. Uh, oh, very good talking to you. And, uh, you know, we'll same, see what happens. Same here, buddy. All, All right, right, man. Take, I, take it easy. All right. Opie and Anthony would talk to each other live on air six more times. From then on, everything appeared to be normal. The Opie radio show was still doing fairly well in afternoons. The Anthony Cumia show was doing just fine. And Jim and Sam were starting to get comfortable with their own show. In fact, just one week after the show's conception, Nancy Grace was a guest on the Jim and Sam show, and she walked out after being confronted. But it would also be fair if you had a, a, a different question other than an attack. But you know what? Again, Nancy, you've I made you a done, lot worse oh, you see, than you, you, did. you just gave. I think our time is up. Bye-bye. Oh, take care. You can leave if you want. Don't worry, we're not going to kill ourselves after the interview. Thanks, guys. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Sometimes the guys would take little pot shots at each other through Twitter or their own shows, but it never escalated to heights like before. The dust had settled, and things were going pretty smoothly. However, things would soon take a turn for the worst for Opie. On June 27th, 2017, Opie had guests Carl Ruiz and Doug Benson. What, where is that but every listeners, summer, though, don't the listeners get mad? They get mad. <laughs> Management gets mad. The people I do the show with get mad. Carl brought a box of chocolates with him, the fancy kind that has the chart that labels all the chocolate. The chocolate is offered to Paul Ofcharsky, one of the producers, and he smacks it to the floor. <laughs> what? Oh, no! <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Carl gets legitimately pissed. I thought you dropped it. You I did thought that it was an accident. Yeah. Paul, You're what happened? Why did you do that? I'm not even joking, bro. You're a piece of shit, bro. That's, That's food, man. That's fancy chocolate. Why did you do that, Paul? I just wanted to. <laughs> you can't even, dude, do me a favor. Don't knock shit off you can't afford, you fucking peasant. Don't do that again. <laughs> Within a few minutes, the situation diffuses, even as Opie and various callers keep bringing it up. Uh, Carl, are you offended that somebody knocked your chocolate over? No, I'm not offended. I'm pissed. I'm pissed. Oh, okay. 
But by the end of the day, they're fine. This was just a hiccup. But this started a snowball effect that would come back to bite Opie in the ass just two days later. Oh, I'm here now! I'm... <laughs> Knock it out now! I'm here now! <laughs> Knock it out now! <laughs> Carl was back, as well as Sherrod Small. Carl takes a subtle shot at Paul. I've got restaurants and stuff. I don't have to depend on people. I don't need free Yankee games or do this or go to little movies uh, what, and shit. What's that shot, Carl? You know what I mean? <laughs> and Paul chooses to not let it go ignored. Carl, you sat here and you cried for a half hour over nothing. So just shut up and quit being a goddamn baby. It's oh. that plain and simple. See this? You better check your staff, Oh, <laughs> Oh, oh. <laughs> you want it's you that want plain to and simple. Oh, just shut check, up about you it. Check your staff, Take it like oh. a man. You got your goddamn chocolates back. So just shut up. Quit I'm being a, a goddamn oh, baby. You better check yeah, your staff, but you're taking oh. shots. What's going you on, man? You won't defend me either. Huh? You won't defend me you, either. You, he called me a peasant and the help the other day. How much help have I given you over the past two years? You are Paul. You're, okay, you're, here we go. You're, you're complete, I'm just saying in but general. But you're completely out of line. The reason, no, why, I'm not. the reason why I'm not defending you on anything is because you picked a side on the other thing. On what? On the rolling video thing. That's because it's the right side. No. You don't understand that. the right side? Here we you go. don't get it. The rolling video thing. Let's back it up a little bit. A few days earlier, Opie and the guys all went to the bathroom after a broadcast. The guys will almost always fool around in there, taking selfies, pulling pants down, kid stuff. Opie decided that, to make everyone laugh, he would film their booker Roland on the toilet. Roland politely asked Opie not to post it, and he didn't. But that didn't stop Opie from showing all of his comedian friends. Roland, still not feeling comfortable, turned Opie into Sirius XM Human Relations. Everyone fucking laughed. And you never I showed the Roland the video. He laughed hysterically. Right. I don't think. That. And I said, "Hey, can, you don't think that That's you weren't happened. there, right? Sure, were was, you there? I was, was he there. laughing his fucking was ass off? I was there. Thank you. Yes. And then I go, "Oh my god, this is really fucking funny. Can I post this?" And we all said no. An attempt was made to keep this under wraps, but it came out because of chocolate. If you're in the inner circle, then things are gonna happen. Period. Yeah, you don't do duck shit. So I'm out right. of the inner circle. You, you see it differently. That's fine. But there's yeah, an inner circle. We thought. And Roland, I didn't bring it up. We you thought did. Roland was in the inner circle. We learned out that. Yeah, the, but if somebody did that to you, you would be mad too. They've, they've done all sorts of crazy shit I to me seen over anything. the years. I have. One week later, on July 6th, 2017, it was officially announced. Nearly three years after Anthony's Twitter rant and firing, Opie had been fired from Sirius XM. Yeah, Man, I was driving I in this morning, anything. and I, I was uh, surprised to hear Dr. Steve was the new morning man. I, yeah. would assume that, right. <laughs> I would assume that something is awry with the channel when Dr. Steve is the morning man. Yeah. No offense to the good doctor, by the way. Yeah. I love him. Yeah, there's definitely changes, obviously. I mean, you know, I was getting tweets about it last night. People are asking, and, and the full details, I don't know. Yeah, um, I don't really know. What we're allowed to say, and I, I have to say that, because it's like you feel like a pussy, not just... I'm not reveling in the fact that somebody who got me my radio job might be out. Like, as much as we've had bad blood, I, I don't revel in that. I really don't. I wouldn't be in the seat had he not decided to hire me. The Opie radio show had lasted nine months. Opie's uploads to YouTube remained just as strange as before, writing weird messages in the sand and filming it. But now, with no radio show, he started making the YouTube videos more frequently, calling them Opie Pop-Up Show. They usually lasted 20 minutes. Most of the time it was just Opie rambling about anything. So Louis C.K., he put out a statement, but it was because he was backed into a corner, he had no choice. And he finally admitted that, you know, all the rumors that people had been talking about for years were, were true. So. His friends started to appear more and more in these videos. I mean, people were building like during the fire. Really? Like, oh, they're so rich. They couldn't even wait. They couldn't wait. <laughs> Fireman, get out of my fucking way. I'm oh. rebuilding my house. <laughs> then he started the Opie Walking and Talking in New York City series, where he would just film himself walking around the streets of New York City. Walking to another meeting. Might as well show you some of New York. The Dakota. The Dakota is also where they filmed Rosemary's Baby. He would talk to people and wax poetic about what he sees. Even when I had no money in New York City, I never jumped on a bus. Everyone on their stupid phones. Morning. Here's Anthony mocking these videos. How are we doing, people? It's a little uh, walk around New York. There's a, that's a street sign. This is a walk, don't walk sign. 
Uh, there's a bunch of those in New York. Then, in March of 2018, Opie went into podcasting. He signed a contract to create a podcast and radio show for Westwood One, and it was called the Opie Radio Podcast. All right, this is the Opie Radio Podcast, episode one, and I find myself in the middle of New Jersey, in the woods. I am currently on a, uh, on a dirt road. Yes. Instead of recording in a studio, usually the episodes were recorded in a bar or a restaurant. Oh, wait, well, my- the ice moved. Huh? The ice moved. Remember the ice moved? The ice was scary. Wait, you had one where the eyes moved? No, no, no. My daughter, she was little at the time. She said the eyes kept following her. Yeah. <laughs> that happens with a lot of old paintings. If you kind of move from side to side, yeah. it gives the illusion that the eyes are uh, actually right, following right. If you check out even one episode on YouTube, the like to dislike ratio is almost unanimously in favor of the dislikes. The top comment on one of the episodes is, this stinks and I don't like it. The sound quality wasn't up to par, the conversations weren't really interesting, but Opie pressed on. And despite not really having a desirable amount of views, he was still no stranger to taking pot shots at his former co-hosts. Look, we didn't like each other, but, uh, you know, somewhere along the, the way, Anthony decided that he really needed to make it him against me. If you really look at the whole history of that, I, I, I was staying out of it. He has spent five and a half years just trashing me at every, uh, at every turn. I can honestly say that the overwhelming majority of hate I get towards me and my family absolutely comes from Anthony. I hope I don't, you know, just casually, you know, walk past him in, uh, in New York City. So In July of 2018, Opie tweeted, quote, I challenge you to find anything that is consistently funnier, unquote. He was talking about his podcast. Anthony took him up on his offer. All right, I'm going to submit to you for this Opie challenge of finding something funnier than his show, SIDS. <laughs> Dead child in a fucking bassinet. That's funnier. Uh, oh, something we all know. 9-11. 9-11. Consistently funnier than Opie's show. The next day, Opie tweeted this, quote, Anyone else find it sad that two shows had to rely on me again today because they're too lazy to prepare for a show? Two shows that constantly obsess about me, couldn't tell you the first thing about theirs, probably should move on and show the world how great you are at this, no? Unquote. This tweet led to Jim saying something on his show. Um, you know, I've moved on, but those guys are obsessed with me. You know, just uh, like me and Anna are obsessed with them. It's fun mm-hmm. to make fun of you. You're I fun see. to make fun of. And people are like, why don't you just unload on him? Because he hasn't given me a reason to unload. I'm not afraid to unload on him. It's more fun to make fun of him. He then unloads on Opie. He thinks I'm pushing this narrative that his podcast sucked. I never said his podcast sucked. I actually said, you fucking dumb autistic, if you'd pay attention. Oop. I actually said... That the radio show you were doing in the afternoon was funny. The podcast, well, if you want to set up a mic in the middle of the table and have eight guys yelling at each other and hope that people can pick it up, that's your business. I encourage people, run to his podcast and enjoy. Right. I'm not one of these people, how to listen to it. There's enough clips with three likes. I mean, I get it. They're being, believe me, social media is grabbing it and running with it. You know, I have to know that there's times I was cunty. I'm not fucking a victim. Mm-hmm. I'm not, you know, I'm sorry. I'm not, a, I'm not a delusional narcissist who thinks he's a victim. At times I was very difficult, but it's funny. So all of us are still friends. The only one that we're not friends with and who are not friends is him. Does it ever occur to you as a person that there is something fundamentally wrong with the way you interact with people? Why nobody likes you? The only Opie and Anthony clips I ever twit, uh, tweet are Anthony. I do think twit is the past of tweet. Uh, yes, and it's also appropriate when I'm talking about him. Uh, <laughs> when Anthony makes Jimmy laugh. Yeah, I do wish at some point the three of you would just sit down. It never happen. It, I know. It, it will never happen. Just, I, it's like, it's like it, you guys are, it's just such a weird thing. Because you're, you're all adults. You should be able, just the three of you, to sit down have a singular conversation, and then everybody move on. But it, it's, it's just not going to happen. I'll tell you what it is. We don't like each other. Oh. Ant doesn't like him. He doesn't like Ant. I don't like him. He doesn't like me. Oh. Ant and I are friends. It is what it is. Yeah. I, but again, there, it's not a hatred where I fucking hope he fuck it. It's not like that. Uh, but there's nothing to say. What are we going to say if we sit down? You know what I mean? Like, what is there to fucking talk about? 
You know, the show was a hugely successful show. But I'm just going to say, if you only understood how the comedians really felt, I'm only going to say that. Do you think everybody associated with that show has come to terms with the fact yet that you guys, us guys, I guess, you three more than anybody else, but I think we're all just attached at the hip for life. It's just never going to be, okay, we're moving on. Like, it, it's, it's everybody associates, there is something about that Opie and Anthony show that it is, it is an infection. Maybe the virus was the greatest the terminology ever phrased because it is never going to go away. The, the thing that links everybody associated with that experience is never going to go away. And this is how things went on for months. They had their time together, it ended somewhat in turmoil, and now they all do their own thing. Someone would throw an occasional shot at another person, they would respond, and life would move on. Opie's tweets became more vicious as time went on, more often than not poking fun at the Jim and Sam show and at Anthony. Throughout it all, Anthony and Jim were the ones who remained really good friends to this very day. Jimmy! Oh my god! Finally! Sam Roberts! He goes over. Rolling stones don't gather <laughs> him! Fuck yeah! Oh my god. <laughs> Fuck yeah, they don't! Oh, oh boy, are people going to be disappointed in this <laughs> reunion? <laughs> they would always appear on the other person's show. Anthony was a very frequent guest on Jim's podcast, the Chip Chipperson podcast. All right, my co-host Anthony Comey is back. Oh, co-host. co-host? Well, you're temporary. I mean, oh, come on. Honored. Fucking begging me. I'm like, all right, whatever. Come on the show, you piece of garbage. And whenever they spoke about each other, it was always very highly respectful. I'm really still close with Anthony, and we still have fun together. Opie has never been on Anthony's show, with the exception of those few phone calls. And he's never been back to his old stomping grounds to go to the Jim and Sam show. It's funny that the man who started this entire train back in 1995 was the one who was cast out. But it wasn't due to some random hatred or a misunderstanding. It was 25 years of tension building up to a crack. But before the tension, there were laughs. (laughs) Opie and Anthony started out as best friends who were kind of foul doing a radio show. Their crude humor made each other laugh, and that's what drew their audience. Fitting her whole fist in her mouth. All right. right. How about mine? (laughs) (laughs) When Jim came in, lightning was caught in a bottle. I gotta get the mic. It's underneath the toilet. (laughs) Some of the jokes, they're inside of it. (laughs) I want my brother coming out with something other than his big teeth in his hand. Beans in the Bronx. <laughs> Which just begs the question, what started the downfall of Opie and Anthony? What was the catalyst? Because it clearly wasn't Anthony taking photos in Manhattan. Sirius XM radio host Anthony Cumia was in New York City and he was alleging that he was taking photos of Times Square. While was it the text Manhattan accidentally sent to uh, Opie instead of Jim? The little cunt won't even look at me. Was it the great fight? You, you how much, passive aggressively you know, threw that I wasn't you, interested in doing the show for some because set period of time. Was it the death of Patrice O'Neill? We've all lost people. I mean, every fucking person listening to our voices. Oh, yeah. But for some reason, this one is really fucking rough. Was it the sex tape hoax with Opie's wife? I got, I got a girl at home that is this close to a fucking nervous breakdown because she doesn't deserve this shit. I don't think it's any of those things. Have you ever went on vacation with a good friend of yours and you had to live with them for like a week? You start to see all those little intricacies, and the things that annoy you about them are amplified because you're both more concentrated? That was Opie and Anthony. If I were to pin it on one thing, however, the one domino that fell that led to a falling out, it would be Anthony's girlfriend in 1999. Despite what the Opie and Anthony brand has turned into today, those older broadcasts really were exceptional. Because they weren't just shock jocks. When they had a room filled with headlining comedians taking dumps on each other, the show transcended into something greater. The show was great because it was raw. 
It was real. A restaurant doesn't open until 12. Yeah, what the uh, fuck? So, <laughs> if anybody should know that, it would be you. Jesus. I feel like carefully. I'm made of metal walking through a land. <laughs> yes. Like I'm a magnet walking through a landmine. You, you're, you're the first one. <laughs> you are a magnet for cake. <laughs> The jokes didn't always have to be funny. It wasn't just about the bits. It wasn't about a homeless man joking about the First Lady, or about an April Fool's joke that the mayor is dead, or about giving a candy bar instead of a hundred grand. It wasn't about having sex in a church, or stomping on a homeless man's cake, or just being naughty. It was about real, honest conversation between real people who weren't afraid to expose themselves. When I think back on Opie and Anthony, I think of their show on June fifteenth, two thousand seven. Shut up! I want to hear. You know, oh, we about. gotta hear it, dude. Stop the bullshit. I want to hear George Burns. And I hate this the is idea. An anniversary show. That Come on, everyone man. is here. Why? You're a little and, eager. I love it. It's sweet, Anthony. Le- I, Jim Norton, like Patrice O'Neill, Rich Voss, and Bob Kelly are in studio, and they play a tape of the very first show with Opie and Anthony when Anthony and his brother came in to play Gunna Electric Shock OJ. Long Island's best rock, WBAB Soul Asylum. Black Gold, Steve Miller, and the latest from... They're already laughing! Uh, uh, shit! Uh, look at both! Uh, look at fucking both, that cocksucker! For an hour and a half, these amazing comedians ripped this tape to shreds. The famous authors of uh, Gun Electric Shock OJ, which mm-hmm. you're going to do live on the show tonight. That's right. And you're going to do other uh, ditties. Uh, yeah, other wacky, kooky stuff, Obi. <laughs> 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 All right. Okay. Who is that right. stranger that walked in the studio? <laughs> I have to leave. Why? I have to leave. Who was that? You had Casey Casey already? I don't want to miss wacky, kooky stuff if we're coming up. And he pulled out of it. I was like, darn. I always wanted to see. Oh, Jesus George Christ. <laughs> Did the Ooh. FCC come after you? <laughs> <laughs> darn. I think we got 30 days. I know. <laughs> you mother. <laughs> if you took. Right. Y'all are so. awful. <laughs> <laughs> this wasn't even. You a... should have been on three hours before y'all come on now, and y'all should be trashing First of you. All, this was... <laughs> <laughs> Who are these two? Can you play the part where, where you go, well, that was fantastic. It's coming up. It's coming up. Is it a Baba Lou? That was a yeah. great. Bubba. Thing you just See, there, it was, uh, you know, sending that out to Sally in Levittown, faithful listener of the program. <laughs> yeah, my choice. <laughs> you should have said the listener of the program. <laughs> I'm out of my mind tonight because I got Joe and Anthony from Rotgut, and these guys are, you guys are mental. I know. That's right. But yeah. thanks for stopping on by. I appreciate it. What? No problem. They're not med- they're mediocre at best. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we have Sam Kinison in the studio tonight, too. Sam. Hey, old man. How you doing, bud? Pretty good. Oh. Yeah, we're hanging out with the guys tonight, having a good time. From Rod Cut. <laughs> My voice was shot. <laughs> that was a that was a great one. Like, like who, Bud Dwyer? <laughs> <laughs> that was a good impression of, of Fred Kinison. That was his, <laughs> his cousin. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was Awful. Oh, this is a nice oh, hot topic. We're hanging out with Rod Gutt on the nighttime attitude. They got a song about the guy that crashed into the into the White you House. You know what? Oh, it'd be fast gonna... name the things they didn't have songs for. <laughs> <laughs> it happened. We sing about it. <laughs> you are so fucking right. The room was on fire. Wait, but your intro should have been, you might recognize this guy if you had your heater fixed last week. <laughs> okay? If your bedroom is nice and cool and comfortable, you may recognize this guy. Okay. <laughs> you Anthony, fast, do you have any uh... plugs? Yeah, I'll be fixing Tom's air conditioning on Saturday. <laughs> Someone yeah. said traveling virus back then. You said there must be mold in the heating <laughs> 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 No, nah, Mike Tyson little, Buster Douglas that song? That was a little before that. Mike Tyson got punched in the mouth. <laughs> and he fell and looked like he was down south. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking awful yeah. motherfucker. Yeah. And then in the it back, was, you'll be like, ah, absolutely, doing a Mike Tyson fadeaway in prison. Oh, oh, Jesus he, Christ. He rhymes like a prisoner. He <laughs> <laughs> really is. I like everything Ope said, I just had a laugh. Like you could be uh, intro in a record, and I'm like, yeah. Yeah. Now, 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 now you know how we feel. <laughs> yeah, no, did he just nail you? <laughs> It's, yeah. Oh, it's Opie in the nighttime uh, attitude. Just want to remind you quickly, tomorrow is Friday, and we're still looking for your suggestions for the perfect lunch hour, uh, the Friday thematic perfect lunch hour. He's just shorten that whole speech to, 
Help! <laughs> <laughs> the two percent was actually Anthony when he was on the show. <laughs> Maybe it's the milk you should start drinking. <laughs> 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 and this is why the Opie and Anthony show is special to me. Because of moments like this. At least at one point. Uh, first of all, fryer listen, hack. Never <laughs> been in shape and always been a shape. I was. I had abs at one point. Oh now yeah. You, now you yeah. Are it's called abs. a fetus. Now you are abs. Wait, now you are abs. You're absolutely fat. You're an absolute mess. You're a lot of abs. They started from nothing as best friends, grew their show into a nationwide hit, got fired three times, constantly made headlines, made radio history, and now, here we are. Jim and Sam are still live every morning on Sirius XM from 7 to 11 a.m. The Anthony Cumia Show can be found on compoundmedia.com. Opie has left Westwood One, but is still podcasting and can be found wherever you listen to your podcasts. Thank you so much for listening to Shock Jocks. It was created by me, Matt Provenzano. The music you are hearing was made by Brad Fry. The first part of the theme song is Gang With No Name by Tex-Mex from Director's Cuts. It can be found on ExtremeMusic.com. The second part of the theme song is Don't Stand Alone by Set It Free under Gas Can Music. The album artwork was created by Nick Balsamo. Thank you to Opie, Anthony, Jim Norton, Rich Voss, Patrice O'Neill, Bob Kelly, Bill Burr, Colin Quinn, Louis C.K., Joe Rogan, and countless others who made 20 years of hilarious radio. Special thanks to Anthony's book, Permanently Suspended, for extra help and research. I encourage everyone to go buy it to learn more about the history of Opie and Anthony. For more of my work, including short films and sketches, you can visit purplecloudentertainment.com. Thank you for listening. Punching out. Punching out.